for this opportunity to share this morning. Um, why sharing the Word of God is such an awesome responsibility. I tell people, I don't like to waste God time or speak the time, even if I went to waste time. And so I really pray that the Lord has heard my cry because I believe I have a word from the Lord. Amen. 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 Thanks to the brethren who prayed yesterday. Um, went to a function. By the way, that was a nice function. Yeah. I enjoyed that. Yeah. It really was, was, was special. So thank you very much. All right, today the topic is supposed to be get a life. Get a life. This is a phrase that usually tells somebody to get a life. When you're expressing a little frustration that their life is too boring or that they are stressing out over things that are not important and they need to get a life. This morning I must confess that whereas you want to talk about getting a life, we have to know exactly what, ex what exactly are we telling people to get. Because there is a particular um, song which I asked my wife if I could have it played and she didn't give me her permission, so. <laughs> As a good Christian was my, you know, you know joke and everything. And wife said, oh, you just no said no. <laughs> But in 19, I think it was early 1970s, there was an appearance by Bob Marley on BBC. Bob Marley and the Whalers actually. Peter Tosh was there, Bunny Whaler was there. And he starts his, his guitar thing, you know? The song was entitled Concrete Jungle. And it was a young Marley to tell you how young he just had Afro with little spikes sticking out. <laughs> so you know, so that is very early money, that. And it was thought that it was arranged by Chris Blackwell. And it was thought that, that was what launched Bob Marley and the Whalers. One of the things he said in the song, and unfortunately the young people not going on the song. He says, no sun will shine in my day today. The high yellow moon won't come out to play. Darkness has covered my light. And this up another my day and tonight. Then he asked the question, where is the love to be found? Life, sweet life, must be somewhere to be found in this your concrete jungle, jungle, yeah. the living is. And he says, artist, there's no H on the song. <laughs> when the living is artist. So we get the impression that this is a man who wants to know where life is to be found. Yeah. The problem is, we get an idea of what life he's talking about in another song. And this one is called Rebel Music. Anybody know rebel music? Yeah. Back in my days when I wasn't a Christian, rebel music was called Roadblock. Then they, they call it rebel music. And this is what the song says. Why can't we roam this open country? Why can't we be what we want to be? We want to be free. <laughs> Three o'clock, roadblock. And I have got to throw away I've got to throw away medical herb stock. Yeah. And then he goes in rebel music. So we get an idea that essentially what Mr. Marley, the life he's looking for, is to be able to be free, to smoke weed and do whatever he wants with nobody preventing him from doing so. And that is what a lot of people think life is. Life is when I can do Whatever I feel I do, whether you like it or not, because you cannot stop me. 
That is the essence of life. And so, that's what Mr. Marley wanted. He wanted sweet life. That's the sweet life we're looking for. Mm. And you know, some people imagine that he was in Ethiopia. I used to imagine that myself. <laughs> that he got to Ethiopia, he was smoke weed all day and, and bun chalice and praise the emperor and just eat and and food and praise Rastafari and beat bumble drum. <laughs> Thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. The truth though is that for most people, life is about deriving happiness and fulfillment from being free to be and to do whatever you want wherever you want, with whomever you want, whenever you want, and nobody must stop you. Can't buy life. Yes. This morning, we want to talk a little bit about getting a real life. Because Jesus had said in Luke chapter 12, verse 15, that you must take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. Brethren, one of the problems that everybody has, including church people, is that we hear things, but they can't benefit us because we really don't believe them. So in other words, although it's Jesus said that in the Bible, yeah. there's something Jesus don't understand. <laughs> you understand? If you don't quite get it. So when he says that a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses, in 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 understand certain things. I want to record this this morning because it's what he scripture we're going to read this morning. Because the, I have a weakness, is the virgin. There's very little that I believe outside the scriptures. Amen. For my life as the foundation of my life, you no matter who said, no matter what degree they have. The things that God has communicated are the things that give me life. Hallelujah. So let me want to check out what the giver of life says about what life really is Amen. all about. So that I can invite my listeners to get a life. Amen. 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 Yeah. This is what we're going to focus on. And for that we're going to read together. Ephesians chapter 2. A very well known passage of scripture. This is actually not life at all. Mm. That's shocking. <laughs> In the natural state of affairs, all are dead. Paul says to the believers in Ephesus, For you have been made alive who were dead. Now, how am I going to convince people that even when life are going good for you, even when everything is nice, that you're dead if you're living in sin. I would not expect you to believe it except that the Spirit of God will help you. Because it is true. Not only were we dead, but this death had certain characteristics about it. It was Characterized by disobedience to God. Mm. Characterized by a fulfilling of our desires. All we needed to do in life was to do what we want to do. And the Bible is calling that death. Mm. It gets worse. <laughs> by doing this, we were following the devil. Mm. I have bad news for you. There is a devil. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. I don't think I should need to convince anybody about that. Once you read news and listen to paper and, and drive on our roads, you know there must be a devil. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody must be influencing this system of things. Yes, the scripture says there is a devil, but that the devil is not in some faraway place burning in fire. The devil is active in the world. Yes. And he is working in the children of disobedience. So not only do we want to do what we want to do naturally, but we are being given a lot of push and assistance and encouragement, and we feel all right about doing it. Mm. 
But whatever we feel, doing all of that, the scripture says, God has a certain reaction to that. The scripture calls it his wrath. So being in that natural state, we're subject to God's wrath. So Paul is saying to the Ephesian church, and by the way, Ephesus was not a particularly godly place. Mm. It was the center of the worship of the goddess Diana. You know, the greatest Diana of the Ephesians. Yes. And Diana was the goddess of love, which basically means goddess of sex. Yes. Same God with various names throughout various cultures. So if Ephesus had a big temple, one of the seven ones of the world, where Diana was worshipped, and people got, had gotten saved in Ephesus. So they were certainly used to a certain lifestyle. And they were now in church. Yeah. And Paul had to let them know that when you were living like that, living it up in Ephesus, you were dead. I'm saying to people this morning, no matter how life nice, if you are not subject to God, if you have not dealt with this Christ, if you find yourself just living by what you desire to do, you are dead. Amen. So you can talk about a life mm -hmm. when you're dead. Amen. Something has to change in that equation yes. in order for us to begin to talk about life. So life is not to get an American or Canadian or QAT residency. <laughs> it's not to have a successful career with the attendant accolades. Or enough money to own a private jet or yacht, a private island for we and our peeps to hold private parties. It is not to be able to smoke weed and drink liquor all day and live sexually immoral lives having abortions in nice, clean facilities yes. without pesky church people bothering us. Yes, I know. I don't like that. Mm. <laughs> With all of that, unless we're in subjection to the God who gave us life, Hallelujah. God wants us to know that that is death. Death. I was having a conversation with Pastor Mike yesterday on we share that concern. Christian, you can't be afraid to tell people like it is. Amen. Amen. We can't believe that because somebody have on jacket and tie and speak in parliament that they are dead. Mm. Until they are subject to Christ. Yes. They are dead. Amen. It doesn't matter if they have parties with underage girls on boats mm. and can fund it. They are dead. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It doesn't matter how many honorary degrees and doctorates they get. Or whether they even earn it because they are bright. Unless they are subject to the God who gave them life, they are dead. Yeah. If you disobey God, you won't die. It's lie material. He never says lie material because he, he might doubt it. Angel <laughs> says, not really, so it go. Christians, if the Bible says that's how it go. Amen. The serpent tried it once, convinced Eve, she convinced her, ad, uh, her Adam, and the result was we are plunged into this state of affairs. Yes. There can be no talk of having life when you are still dead. But praise God, there is a book God. Oh, Lord mercy. The whole Bible is about what God is about. Yes. Because, because God never has to do anything about this in the Virgin. I don't know why I feel God was under some pressure. Yes. The only pressure he was under was his own love and his own mercy. Yes. Yeah, man. From the day that fall occurred, the Bible said he slew an animal and took the skin and yes. wrapped them, signifying that through the blood, he's going to cover sin. And so Paul says in verses 4 to 8, God who has a huge mercy account made dead people live. So the, 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 the thing that changes the equation is God. Not the God we make up, you know, the one who, you know, 
send you son <laughs> to die for us. We call out a maid of God's are wrong. Don't you know that? Yes, sir. Amen. Whomever or whatever you imagine to be, forget that. You know this is the Ratha, right? You know this is the Ratha? Yes. Be at peace with God. Whomever or whatever you can see him today. Back off with that. I lie you and tell. Amen. Amen. It's so nice, you know. It is so peaceful and modern, but it's a lie. Yes, sir. God is not whomever or whatever you meet him out to be, friends. God is the God who has revealed himself. He has revealed himself in nature. Yes. The heavens declare what? The glory of God and the open space shows his handiwork. But he went further and he said, prophets, men chosen by him to reveal the type of God that he is. Yes. And then he took it another step further yes. and he came himself. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah, man. Yes. I went in court, I declared the thing. Full hundred. Amen. Praise God for Jesus. So the God you are talking right to the red light. <laughs> My wife turned to me and said, So do you never know that now? Red lights are not for bike riders. All the bike man and just come to the light. You look right who's left on the ground. And the result of that is going to be chaos. So a holy God simply cannot say, Well, I don't know, like them and thing. So make them go under them sin. He had a response to wrath, but he did something in Jesus to save us from wrath. Hallelujah. He made us alive, delivered us from his wrath, and has given us a heavenly hope. In other words, the life I'm talking about this morning, which I'm saying, get a life, does not end if you die. Moses said, if you die, because you might not die, the Lord might come before. Amen. The dead, the dead Christian went, went caught up before you, but you will be caught up too. Amen. To meet the Lord in the air. But Paul is saying that, listen, this life which God has caused us to come alive to through Jesus Christ is not one that has only significance for the time and space. It has eternal perspectives to it. Amen. And finally it says, God has made us trophies of his redeeming grace. God is going to boast about the people whom he has given life. And rightly so. <laughs> I heard some testimonies two weeks ago. A brother used to so live in Kai Kai. <laughs> <laughs> Them man don't believe in rifle. Somebody go on them with, when the man describe them, they them, and they never be here about them yet. Right? And, and, and he was demonstrating at the prayer breakfast. He said, when you fire one of them, he, 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 he like to lick out the chest. And this dead man went to a gospel meeting yes. and decided to sit down and feel a spliff in front of the preacher. Mm. <laughs> eh? When Satan arrived up in him in his rebellion, and in the middle of that, there was a but God. Hallelujah. So yeah. dead man was going to remain alive. Because as the preacher went on, he came under conviction with the little thing where the preacher said, I'll tell him one man, friend, say, No, I'm going to give my life to the Lord. They say, You're an idiot, man. You can't give your life to the Lord. Because they know him. Yeah. It's a man with power, worry, come on. You can't give your life to the Lord. And he says somehow that worked the opposite effect. They dared him. Mm. And so he surrendered to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 27 years ago. Yeah. Well, to the same woman yes. ministering all over the world yes. by his music because God made him. It's too late. We cannot believe in the gospel again. Amen. Too much evidence yes, of sir. dead people who have been made alive. Hallelujah. They could have cost church pan pan all the stage and them all they want. The evidence is overwhelming. Yes. God is raising up dead people yes. and yes. giving them life. Amen. Something happened and they are not the same anymore. Yeah, yeah man, I know my brethren. Oh, and I think I told you about him already. We used to park, we used to go to the house, and we used to go home in that direction. And those who remember Jerry, Jerry was a rough youth. Rough. 
Even after I was saved, he nearly choke a guy who threatened me. <laughs> a Rasta guy, I made a comment. How many people in JC were turning Rasta? And the guy walked down to the gate of JC and come back and choke me. And Jerry stepped in and said, Boy, hey, what are we have? He backed off. If you saw the size of Jerry, you know why he backed off. <laughs> but I never saw Jerry for years, Pastor Harry. But when I found him on Facebook, and he answered me by saying, It is I, General Dougie. It's only Jerry Dalton, General Dougie. <laughs> he was no Reverend Dr. Gerald Green. Well, I was, I was wondering if I had the right person. <laughs> Reverend Dr. Gerald Green. But I hadn't already read the whole story yet. He went to the United States. And the man was running a big cartel. Mm. All over the East Coast. FBI had no fame. And he wanted to sneak out of Florida. Mm. Went to a little church. Yes. As a dead man. Yes. Heard one little preacher find him tough self up at the altar, bawling. Yes. Him start to fret. What is happening here? <laughs> now, if you know him, you don't understand why he was fretting. It's a hardcore. And then they invite. She invite him back, his wife. And he kept going. And he gave his life to the Lord. Yeah. He has been here one time already to preach. I have been with him in this church. I mean, he in church twice in Port St. Lucie. He ministers all over the world. But God. Yeah. When we talk about God making people alive, it's so poetic, but it is real. Yes. Amen. 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 This man, he married longer than me. Jerry, married longer than me. Yes. I thought he was a married man, married longer than me. Same woman, ministering to the Lord in the same church all over the place. Because he was dead. Yes. Me and God made him alive. Yes. this is a life we're talking about. Get alive. Yes. You will not be the same. You will not be the same. I'm going to tell you about one more life. I will never come first. And win prize every year. Accepted the Lord at age seven. And went to JC. I don't know what happened at JC. <laughs> <laughs> And I might get to this little later. But all I know, I ended up meeting a Rastafarian or two who told me about Emperor Ai Ai. <laughs> Selassie Ai. <laughs> Very convincing. There were six farmers, and I was a second farmer. And the man that me through book. Kebra Negas, the Book of Kings from Ethiopia, Solomon and Emperor, Revelation 19, 1 Timothy chapter 6, and all of these things. And I became a Rasta. My track career went into the, the ground. <laughs> all the people that used to beat up around past me. <laughs> the only subject that I could take on was Mr. Hayes' history. Everything was went on. But God. Hallelujah! Brother when I said, but God, there's a reason. I cannot tell you why. I am on my way to Zion. <laughs> on the black star line. <laughs> Waiting to get into Ethiopia where I and I can be free. <laughs> and nobody can say nothing to me. Eh? 
I cannot tell you how with a simple message from a simple school friend. I renounce Rastafari. Hallelujah. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And start preaching Jesus. Amen. Get a life. Where are we going to move on? Time is going. Please, please.